they've not they've not come out to release a date or time for the hearing this has got many of us asking how long is the injunction going to take stay with us we'll be back shortly Welcome back to the show. My name is Sandra. Unfortunately, Ino couldn't join us today because he has another assignment. Um, like I was saying earlier, the SRC Court of Justice placed an injunction on the 2023 SRC elections last week. And so far, the court has not come out with a date or a time for the hearing. Let's take a report from Zenas. It has been seven days since the SRC Court of Judicature placed an injunction on the 2023 U.S. SRC elections. Since then, there hasn't been any formal communication from the court for a date and time set for hearing. The 2023 U.S. SRC election was running smoothly on its usual process with vetting being done and preparations were ongoing for manifesto reading and the debate. U.S. is a school that has been plagued by court hearing over the years and this is the fifth year that we are going to court. It is still too early to know how the outcome of this year's court hearing would be. But one thing for sure is it has got to do with the Electoral Commission. What is the way forward? A lot of students have been reacting. So, With the court placing an injunction on the elections, people are asking, what is the next step? How long is this going to take? Are we going to see an acting president? There have been mixed reactions on campus as students wait eagerly for the court to set a date and time for hearing to fast track the process of court. Some students who spoke to U.S. based TV off camera say that they are not surprised that this year there are courts and legal issues with regards to the election. We'll be speaking to Mr. Bright Sion. He is the former EC of the University of Ghana. He joins us via Zoom. Can you tell us what the voting process looks like at the University of Ghana? All right, so over the past years at the University of Ghana, Student Representative Council, we've had you know, different mode of election. I think in 2021, Amid COVID-19, we had a manual election concurrently with online elections. So right. I was asking, what the voting process looks like at UG? Until recently, that was last year. Managed into students' like A determination was made. From the Dean of Students Affairs of that all students' elections on campus should be held strictly online. So since last year, elections on campus in West of Ghana these elections, it has been strictly online since last year. So with the voting methods, the online what? voting methods. And so I was asking what the method of voting had the effects the method of voting had on the turnout of elections. Did the numbers increase or decrease? That what effects did they have on the turnout of elections in general? Please come again with your question. Please, I, w I was asking what the method of voting, the effects had on the turnout of elections? So, with regards to online election, comparing previous years from 2020-2021 to that of 2022, which was online, and 2023 also online. Comparing these two, you realize that 
there is no significant, you know, effect in terms of voter turnout. Students at the University of Ghana, be it online, be it manual, they, they, they mostly turn out. I say this because 2021 SRC election, we had manual and online mode of election because of COVID-19. A turnout of around 7,000. And those who voted manual or country also had around 7,000. So invariably, you realize that comparatively, in terms of turnout, willing to cast their vote regardless of their uh, mode of election at the University of Ghana. But then, if you want to really put one ahead, right. so I would say in terms of impact, the turnout online will give you high voter turnout. Uh, online would also ensure that in terms of electoral disputes at the polling stations uh, are you know, prevented so to say, because students are in their rooms casting their votes. Um, but there's a, an issue when it comes to online election that has to do with transparency. Because with the online elections, in as much as the electoral commission would guarantee transparency, if you look at manual election, it will give high transparency compared to online election. Okay, so moving on, I would like to know your thoughts on injunctions on elections in general. Are there, are there any benefits when it comes to injunctions on elections? Indeed, the court will listen here and make the determination. So beneficial First of all, because aspirants or candidate parties involved in the election will get a fair hearing with regards to their agreement. It becomes a disadvantage when the court does not take the necessary steps to hear the injunction within time. Thank you. My next question is that okay. when there are legal issues during elections, what is the way forward? So, uh, legal issues. Yes. Basically, that some legal issues that would pop up amid election is something that you've said in junction during electoral processes. Legal issues are mostly candy. They are seeking an interpretation about something that the EC is doing, or they are going to contest. Maybe they have been disqualified. Then, no, they go to grant pleading, and the court will come the legal. Um, Mr. Bright. So currently. The U.S. SRC elections has come to a halt because the court has placed an injunction on the SRC elections. This is the fifth. This is the fifth year we've had legal issues with regards to our elections. So I want to ask, um, what what is your final thoughts? What is your thoughts on? You has SRC elections in general. What does the future look like for SRC elections in you has? If there is an injunction on the election, it means the court has granted the injunction. And I think that definitely the court has granted the injunction. We have to respect the rule of law and ensure that processes comes to a halt. Meanwhile, the courts must take necessary steps towards to make a determination on the matter that is in court or institutions happen. However, the court will take to make what a determination. I'm sure constitution and it stipulates the timeline 
things when an equal the 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 be it judicial board or what's not will take to determine make a determination on the matter. The constitution must be upheld. If it is five days, if it is ensure that they make a determination on the matter so that the election can what can be conducted. When the court plays an injunction and it is taking two weeks, one month, it means that but issues of legal tussles, these are not new to elections. It happens. It has to do with what is necessary is that the court must take steps as soon as possible, make a determination. Um, so from what you are saying, it is okay or all right if we have legal issues in elections, but then doesn't it become a problem if it becomes a frequent something, like year after year after year after year we have legal issues with our elections? Doesn't it become a problem? It, it, it will become a problem based on what is leading to the what, to the legal issues. Here at the University of Ghana, over the past years, we've put measures to ensure that legal issues are avoided. Example, issues of disqualification during vetting and other minor issues. These things in the long run reduce the legal tassels during elections. However, if within the framers of the constitution, the, the matter in court is in court constitutional, why not? I mean, then it should go to court. But then measures must be put in place to reduce the frequent issues of what courts amid what elections. I think, I don't know why the you have election is currently in court. I'm not privy to that. Meanwhile, going to court during election is not new, and it it is something that is enshrined in the constitution. However, it is not everything that has to go to court. There are certain things that the commission can take necessary steps to to, to rectify them. We, I would say. I do not know why, unless you are able to tell me why the you has election is in court current, then I can comment on it. However, regardless of court issue, here the university of issue, but it always comes to pass and we conduct the election. So I would say the court should first of all take the necessary steps to resolve the matter. So that the elections can be conducted. But if there are frequent issues of court joint election, then the commission must look at some of these things that leads to courts and find better solutions to them. Uh, I think for the past five years, it's always have Well, looking forward, these issues would not occur again. And some of the measures are having a very strong constitutional instrument that will guide the conduct of an election. When you have a strong constitutional instrument, every aspirant or parties know what they have to do, they know what they are not supposed to do, and the electoral processes. Very successful devoid of Thank you. Okay. Hello. So my next um, my next question is that in our constitutional instrument for a candidate to pass the vetting process, he or she is supposed to acquire an um, eighty percent minimum to be able to pass the vetting process. Do you think this should be scrapped off or we should continue with this particular, should I say, benchmark? 
of 80% minimum pass. And if you think it should be scrapped off, do you have any recommendations to the electoral commission? Okay, so I, I believe here at the University of Ghana, we have totally, uh, this year, this year, finally this year, we have, a court has ruled that giving percentages to candidates after vetting is, should be what? Should be a thing of the past. So this year's best, so it's very basic. You come to the vetting, we award you max. Our past mark previously was 60%. And I think that the 80% is first of all too much, I must say. Uh, over the past years at the University of Ghana, we've had 60% past mark. Past mark. If an aspirant does not meet the 60%, the aspirant will not be what? Disqualified. However, the aspirant will be deemed as not recommended. Meanwhile, the not recommend, not recommended does not mean the aspirant cannot vote, contest in the election. Our constitution protects the political rights of candidates. Some candidates would perform abysmally during that, that is true. So you would score them low. But when you score them low, our constitution guarantees that both the constitutional instrument, SRC election, it guarantees that regardless of falling below the 60%, the aspirant would still move on to contest in the election and students will make their final determination whether they want that person to be their president or not. So there should be a constitutional review, first of all, with regards to the 80% pass mark. And also, if aspirants fall below the threshold, they should be... deemed as qualified out of the race with the mere fact that a vetting panel give them a low score. I think that is something that should be, you know, looked at at you has if such a thing is happening there. Thank you. So, my final question. Um, in you house now, the the SRC court has placed an injunction. We know that already. And for the past seven days or for a whole week. The court has not released a date or time for the hearing. Do you think seven days is too long or too short for the court to release a date for the hearing? Well, if the constitution demands that when a matter is sent to court, the court has at least or a maximum of seven days to make a determination. Then within the seven days, it is fine for the court to make a determination. But if it goes beyond the seven days and the constitution says that seven weeks to make a nation, then fair enough, the court have that within seven days to make a determination is not a problem. But if the court still goes beyond what the constitution stipulates, then it becomes a very big problem. We had an interview with Mr. Bright Sian, the former EC of the University of Ghana. Thank you for staying with us. Don't forget to like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then follow us on Twitter for the latest news and updates. And we are also going to bring you all the updates and the live coverage.